Recording is on and you can go ahead. All right, hello everyone. So uh, before I jump into this, I usually lead by saying that I have uh, stage fright, fear of public speaking. Um, it usually buys me some time to be rusty, but I'm not sure if that works on, on Zoom. But we'll see how it goes. Um, so I wanted to talk about uh, my tech stack and I'd like to uh, represent the bootstrappers of the world. So the tech stack for creating social uh, media content. So just to brief you real quick, uh, the type of content that I share uh, helps entrepreneurs find and validate innovative concepts. Um, so it's a lot of high level uh, advice. And so by bootstrap, what I mean is um, I'm always thinking in terms of uh, self-funding. So I intentionally start any project extremely tiny so that it only requires very little capital. And whatever I can generate out of this project in terms of cash flow, I'd re reinvest into the uh, project itself. So we'd like to think of ourselves as bootstrappers being the anti-VC uh, folk. Um, but this other aspect is um, you know, being hackers. So uh, the do-it-yourself kind of person where uh, we'd reach out for any sort of app or application um, and patch things together, connect them together uh, in ways they might not be intended to. Um, and bonus points if those apps are, are free. And so with this lens, with the bootstrappers lens, I wanted to show you sort of the back end of how I uh, approach creating uh, content for, uh, so for my social media. And I wanted to start with uh, Instagram. So uh, this is what my Instagram currently looks like. It's a very stripped down sort of visual language, let's say. Um, and I've conveniently actually rebooted the entire thing a couple of weeks ago. And so, you know, the type of graphics that I share, the type of uh, visuals that I share are very uh, minimalistic in style. And the reason they're minimalistic is because I'm using very basic uh, software to power this. And so the expectation behind and uh, back end is that, you know, behind these images is maybe a basic understanding of uh, Photoshop, maybe Canva, or perhaps one of the more popular uh, recent editions, uh, Figma. Uh, but the reality is I'm not using uh, any of those. So those are uh, pieces of software that are intended for graphic design. And instead I'm using Keynote. Um, so Keynote is basically the Mac version of uh, PowerPoint. And the purpose of it is to create slides like the ones you're seeing, the presentations that you're seeing. So definitely not in intended to create social media content. Um, so, but that's the bootstrapper for you. And so, I couple that, uh, I, I couple using Keynote with uh, two web tools, uh, remove BG, which allows me to remove the image background so I don't get the you know, boxed uh, images if I'm importing from uh, Google images. Uh, so that allows me to get rid of that. Uh, plus I use a combination of uh, Screely, which turns my screenshots into beautiful website or, or mobile uh, mockups. So basically I'm, uh, you know, uh, patching on uh, alternatives of uh, you know, your typical uh, graphic design software, Photoshop or whatnot. So back end, this is what it looks like. Um, it's a series of slides, just like a presentation. Um, and each slide uh, represents basically a, a post. And so uh, the funny thing is the, the, the way I approached, you know, sort of the, the language that, I've, that I'm using or the visual language that I'm using is actually to work within the constraints of the, of the software that I'm using, so Keynote. Um, so that's why the uh, visuals end up being very minimalistic. Uh, so the, the constraint actually drives a distinct, uh, distinct imagery. And so basically this is a very simple uh, uh, thing to do. You just go in and you, you uh, modify the slide sizes to replicate basically the aspect ratios of uh, you know, social media, Twitter or, uh, or Instagram or even uh, LinkedIn. Um, and then once you export, they uh, you know, slot in perfectly uh, on Instagram. All right, I wanna show you what Twitter looks like. So uh, Twitter is more of a playground uh, for me. Uh, I've actually been more intentional about it in the past couple of months. And so I actually have two accounts. I have the you know, public one, the one that people follow me on and, and the one that's you know, visible to everybody. Uh, but, but I also have one that's called, conveniently called 
test ATL device on. Uh, and it's represented by that uh, red avatar there. Um, and what I do with that test account is um, I test the way that uh, different posts will look once they're uh, tweeted out into the world. Um, and so the reason I do that is because uh, the way you format tweets, both text and images, is as important as the message that's uh, contained in that tweet. Uh, so most people, people kind of scan their uh, uh, Twitter timelines. And if you format it in a specific way, it'll, it'll look more appealing and improve uh, your chances of you know, viewers stopping at your, at your tweet. So you can see here, for example, in my test account, um, I was attempting to align one of the uh, graphics that I've created. Uh, but I also realized that you know, with the sentence at the very end, failure is on its own uh, uh, line, which doesn't really look uh, nice. So I kept on iterating, iterating, and then once I'm satisfied with the way it looks, then I uh, post it onto my actual account. So a lot of hacking that, go that goes in um, back end. And so up to now, I've been using basically default software, let's call it, or free software. Um, and, the, and the purpose is, you know, uh, I don't want to waste my time uh, learning new uh, pieces of uh, software or how to use them. Uh, when, you know, the, the pieces of software that I already am familiar with, I can use to achieve the same outcome. However, here's my first, uh, you know, uh, app that I use that's actually paid. Um, and so what Hype Fury does, so this is a third party uh, Twitter application. Uh, it's called Hype Fury. Um, it's actually quite recent. I think they launched mid 2019. Um, and so what it does is uh, it allows you to schedule tweets, but on top of that, it allows you to uh, sort of tag specific tweets as evergreen posts. Um, and when you tag them as evergreen posts, you basically get a database of uh, posts that offer timeless pieces of advice. Uh, and so those are tweets that aren't necessarily tied to current events uh, or anything that's ongoing. Um, and so what happens is, let's say you have a, a schedule for when you're supposed to tweet out um, and you have, let's say, nine out of 10 slots uh, scheduled. Uh, what Hype Fury does is if it finds, you know, that 10th slot is still empty it'll uh, automatically go back into my uh, evergreen posts and retweet, something, retweet a timeless sort of uh, a piece of advice. Um, and so what this allows me to do is it allows me to uh, basically scale uh, the way I approach Twitter, but also take advantage of the fact that, uh, you know, uh, on specific days when I don't have time to uh, schedule my content or I, ha I don't have time to manage them, uh, I know that, you know, Hype Fury is there to pick up my Slack. Um, and so obviously this sort of feature, I, don't, I can't uh, hack my way to without paying. Uh, so that's when, when I end up uh, paying for a piece of software. So that's the, the bootstrappers mentality for you. And so the funny thing is, you know, this is like the uh, modern day or the con content marketers version of, you know, Excel being the best project management software. Um, I think Sam, most you have yes. uh, two minutes left, followed by five minutes for Q and A. Okay, and so the um, um, and so th this is basically the modern day version of you know a content marketer, uh, you know hacking back end, but this is actually more prevalent than we uh, we believe. So I think most of you, for example, that have started projects, maybe um, small uh, businesses or. Uh, startups, you know, on day one, your accounting software is Excel. Um, if you're part of a larger organization, you know, your dashboards, your, uh, your tracking sheets, they're all enhanced in Excel. Um, and so the, the message that I'm try, trying to drive in here is it's more about outcome as opposed to, you know, the idea itself. And so whenever you're approaching a new project, you need to think about the, uh, how a bootstrapper would approach uh, you know, achieving that same outcome that your idea does. Um, many times, uh, startup teams, they focus on competing with other paid uh, products. Uh, when, when many of the many times, what they're competing against is non-consumption or is, or is this uh, a huge customer segment that's deciding to default back 
to using uh, uh, other means, default uh, pieces of software to achieve the same uh, outcome. Uh, and that's it. That's what I have. Any questions? Uh, we have six minutes for Q&A. Anybody has questions, feel free to ask. Let's give it a minute uh, for people to type questions. Okay, there is a question. Instagram is the best way to market. What tools other than Buffer would you suggest uh, both for content generation and ad targeting? Okay, um, so uh, for ad targeting, I actually don't have any experience in that. I've never uh, or I've rarely run uh, any ads. Uh, so I'm not familiar with that. Uh, for Buffer, um, for a brief time, I used uh, Later, uh, which is an alternative to Buffer. And the reason I was using uh, Later as opposed to Buffer or Hootsuite or any of the other third-party applications um, is for two reasons. Number one is that uh, Later gives you a, a visual preview of what your, um, your you know, feed will look like, your profile would look like once everything is posted. And so uh, many brands, what they do is, uh, you know, they post intentionally in a way so that... Uh, you know, the series of three, uh, the latest three posts or the latest nine posts make up a grid. Um, and so you can sort of visually see that before the posts get actually posted. Uh, if you're using later, that's uh, one reason. And the other reason is that um, later is the only uh, third party application that I know of uh, that allows you to, s to schedule um, carousels with more than three images in the post. So, yeah. Uh, any more questions? Okay, I guess not. Thank you very much.